Hi guys, this is Heather. Welcome back. I've got my brand new cup turner. It's plugged in. I put my cup on it. There's a noodle, one of those noodles. Here, let me get it under the picture. Well, there you go. I just shoved it in there. It's about five inches long. And I got it on my cup turner. And I've been watching it to make sure that it doesn't come up and down and so it doesn't wobble. It needs to be um, concentric while it's turning. And we did a good job building this. This is going to be the first coat of epoxy. I'm using Amazing Clear Cast for the first time. I um, don't know how it's going to work, but everybody else seems to use it. This is FDA approved, so that if you you know put your lips on this this edge without having the lid on it, you're you're good. Oh, I wanted to show you this too. This is my Aurora Borealis, my night sky. Turned out okay. Not what I was expecting, but. It's all right. I like it. But I'm just going to do this one here today. Now, let's see. I made, I mixed my resin up. It's just sitting here. I'm letting some of the bubbles come to the top. I've got my torch handy. I do have a heat gun, but it's on the other side of the basement. So I'm just going to use my regular torch. Most everything I got was from Amazon, so... All you have to do is just do some searching. I'm going to apply this with my finger. And uh, let's see, what else do we need? I sealed it with this um, Aline's acrylic sealer. It's a matte finish. So that the glitter won't shift while I'm putting the resin on. You don't have to use this. Just use whatever you've got. As long as it's clear. It can be gloss, um, but I've never done these before, so I'm kind of scared to start, <laughs> but let's get to it. Now, I stir this and it creates bubbles. I've, I've played with resin lots of times. I use, um, what do I use? It's a clear cast 7050, um, I think. Anyways, it's got a 7050 on it, and that's what I use all the time. So I've played with resin quite a bit. <sighs> oh, I'm scared. I don't want to ruin this after this cute painting. Let's just go for it. Anyways, the bubbles in here are okay. It doesn't matter because you're going to create bubbles while you're applying it. And that's what the torch is for or the heat gun. And I've mixed up 15 milliliters of this stuff. I don't know if that's going to be enough or too much, but the cup turner is what keeps this from I think it'd be faster if I just use my finger dip it in the, the cup. It keeps the this, if you put it on too thick, let's just say that, if you put it on too thick it will start running and you'll get drips. So the cup turner keeps it moving. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I hope you guys can see the, the super shine.
and I'm going just right up to the ridge and then I'm going to just rub my finger over the lip just so that it completely encompasses the glitter. Now it's not, this is not going to be the end coat. I've got to add more. I've got to do another layer of resin after this one cures. But what we'll do is let this cure. Got some drips. And then we'll check to see how lumpy or bumpy it is. And if it's good, we won't have to sand it. But what you'll do is a wet sand. Coming off the... I'm just all over the place here. I should just worry about the body first. And uh, then worry about the top and bottom. I did not put glitter on the bottom. I just took it right to the edge. And it looks like 15 millimeters, milliliters might be perfect. I just need to... Uh, spread this around a little and if you're finding that your resin is too thick it's not runny enough you can always put a torch to it or a heat gun to it and that will create it um, to get more runny So you really want a low viscosity, if I said that right. I think high viscosity means it's really thick and so it won't run. So I'm just getting it up to the edge here. Looks like everything is covered. I got a worm. What is that? So now I'm just going to run my finger around the, just around the lip. Make sure that everything is coated because you want the glitter to be completely sealed. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom, just running it around the lip. I don't want to go too far into the, there's that worm. It's a piece of glitter that's long. I'm creating bubbles here, and that's okay. These... They look like little worms coming up. Weird. I've never, like I said, I've never done these cups before. Didn't know what to expect. I just saw this design that Minderella had done, and I was like, that is so cool. I have to make a cheetah cup. So, I'm just letting this turn, covering the lip just to completely seal the glitter. Can you see these worms popping up? They'll have to be sanded off. And I can see bubbles here. So what I'm going to do now, this looks like it's completely coated. So I'm going to take off my glove to my right hand. I'm going to leave my left glove on. <clears throat> Shake up my, my uh, butane. 
See if I can turn this knob. And I'm just going to pass it. Yeah. Come on, you. I am about five, six inches away, and I'm not holding it in one place at all because I don't want it to smoke. I just want to create heat to pop those bubbles. And I can't tell if they're bubbles or glitter. It's weird. Oh, I got some smoke. I got a little too close. So what I'm finding is that those little bumps is not bubbles now. Now all I'm getting is uh, those little hairs are still sticking up. So we're going to just let this cure and see what it looks like. So I'm going to have to get out my wet sandpaper. You want to use wet sandpaper for this because you don't want to you don't want to use dry sandpaper on epoxy that's cured because you'll get all the powder that comes up in the air and then you'll get it in your lungs. And well, if you do want to use a dry, you can use a respirator. I have a, a 3M one. Let's see if I can show it to you. without hitting my cup so that's that and we will be back as soon as this is cured enough so that I can touch it I'll have to clean up I have to clean up that bottom so I'm gonna get a little alcohol you can't see it and I can't move my camera I'm gonna put a little alcohol on this paper towel and I'm just going to lightly come in and touch it right under the lip so that that alcohol wipes up that excess resin you want to get that as clean as possible so that you don't have to do any major cleanup because once this is cured you have to do a lot of work to clean it off. So clean it off now while you can. So that looks pretty good. All right, we will see you in uh, just a second for you, but it will probably be eight to 10 hours for me. I'm guessing. I can usually touch my ClearCast 7050 in about eight hours. Um, don't know about this amazing ClearCast. So we will see. See you in a bit. Hi guys, I'm back. I did some sanding on this. I still need to wipe it off with acetone. I'm going to use acetone today because I've used alcohol before and on my other uh, projects, not cups. But what I've done is um, when I resin over after alcohol, sometimes I get fish eyes. So I'm going to try the acetone today, but I'm going to show you how I sand it. With this one, I did a top coat on it yesterday as well. Or just a, an initial coat, not a top coat. I'm going to get my cup water, cup in the water, get my sandpaper wet. And I'm just, this is uh, 180. And I'm just lightly rubbing. I don't know 
if you can see, there are little bumps, like right there. So I'm just lightly catching those bumps. And then after I get all the sides done, then I'll come around and even more lightly hit the edges. sure that there are no obvious ridges. Same on the top. And smooth it out. But that's basically all I do. So I'll just uh, put this aside for now and work on that in a little bit. Right now I'm going to take my paper towel and I just have 100% acetone. So I'm going to get my paper towel wet here. I do liberal. Uh, probably less is more, but acetone and alcohol seems to dry so fast that I like... Oh, where did that come from? I use the other side. I just like to get nice and saturated. So I'm getting off all of the powdered residue from the epoxy and anything else that might be lingering. And I'm going to catch the top. And at this point, I'm going to put on my rubber gloves so that if I have any oils on my hands, I won't get it on the cup. You want to make sure that you uh, try to avoid as much of that introducing other elements as possible. So, let me get these on. And then we will finish wiping down. The thing is, you want to just be... Acetone tends to eat through these gloves. <laughs> so, I'm just going to give it a quick wipe again and throw that away. Alright. Stick that noodle into the cup and put that on there. And plug in the turner. Get a sip of my creamer that's just tinted with coffee. <laughs> mm. And now I'm going to mix up another seven and a half mils of each, which will give me 15 mils. That worked out perfect because I did the other one the same way as this, as this one. And I didn't run into any issues whatsoever. So that's a good thing. So I'm just cleaning off this excess residue here, or excess epoxy. And I'm going to just use the same cup. So I'll be right back. Well, maybe. My remote's not working. Okay. So I will just do it in front of you guys. Just make it that much longer. Oh, that's the thicker, so I'm going to put the thinner in first. The only reason why I do the thinner first is because... The thicker, if you put that in first, you you could have more issues of it not getting mixed well enough because it just it's so heavy and thick. It just sits on the bottom of the cup. Okay, I've got seven and a half milliliters there. 
put the lid on this because I'm a clumsy person and I tend to knock things over. Now I'm going to just measure up to the 15 milliliter mark here with this heavy stuff. It's really thick. It's extremely viscous. But i got to hold it up at my eye level so I can see when it gets to that 15 milliliter mark. So give me one second. And that is at 15. So I'll put the lid back on this. I used a wooden spatula yesterday and I'm going to use a plastic one today. Cut a hole in my thumb. That's all right. My right hand isn't going to get messy. So I'm going to stir this for two to three minutes. And I was going to tell you guys, yeah, this is the next day, so I was going to say yesterday, but for you it's instant. I was going to tell you guys earlier that you don't have to have a cup turner with this. You can use a foam brush or a, a paintbrush if you want to sacrifice it because you can clean the brushes with alcohol but I haven't had too much luck and I've cleaned them for a long time working at it trying to get it to get every bit of that epoxy out of the bristles so I end up Maybe getting to use it maybe twice and then I have to throw them away. So I just switched to foam brushes. You can get a bag of them for like a, you know, a couple bucks at Fleet Farm or any, any place that's like Fleet Farm, like Home De Depot or Lowe's. But what you would do is you would just set the cup upside down on the freezer paper and then you would do extremely thin coats on it and then you would uh, basically just touch up the edges around where the bottom of the cup sits on the freezer paper then you would come back maybe 20 minutes later and of course you couldn't do it with one of these because you'd have to have something to hold on to but if, it, if this was taped off there was no, there's no ridge on these cups, so I didn't tape it. But if there was a ridge on it, like some of the stainless steel mugs, you could tape it, and then you could grab that tape, lift it up, wipe it a little bit more with alcohol or acetone, uh, whichever you prefer. They both work. And then set it back down, check it in another 20 minutes. Um... I did one cup like, or actually I did two cups like that, and they worked pretty well. I The one I put a, the, a little too much, a little too thick. And so I did have to do a lot more cleanup on that one, but the other one was perfect. I just had to go around the edge of the cup with a, an X-Acto knife. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, um, actually what I did was I just heated it up. And that uh, cut it and melted it at the same time would put it a perfect lip on it. So you don't have to do that. And I could do one for you in another video if you guys want. Just leave a comment and say, yeah, I want to see how you do that. Or don't comment at all. Whichever. If you're interested, I'd be happy to try one. Um, I'm running out of cups though. We got these, we got these cups at uh, Walmart uh, when I was visiting my daughter in Chicago. I was actually watching the kids while she was getting the house ready for sale, and I gave her twenty bucks and I said, "See if you can find some stainless steel mugs for like three bucks." And she found they did have some for three dollars, but they were all sold out. 
And so she got me these. These were $5 a piece. They come with a plastic lid with a, an opening for drinking through. And so it's like, oh my gosh, I get to play. So I was really excited that I got four. And I've done two so far. I poured some skins. I wanted, I cut out, I made a template for the cup. And uh, I poured some skins to fit that template. So I have some a couple choices here when they get ready. And I want to put a skin on, which it's an acrylic pour is what it is. So if you've watched acrylic pouring, uh, check out, if, or if you haven't watched acrylic pouring, check out Miriam's Nature, Miriam with a Y. And check her out. I'm a big fan of hers. I watch her all the time and I'm so inspired, but I'm horrible at pouring. So, I've kind of half given up. <laughs> Not 100%. I still have to try. I still have to keep trying because I, I can't let things beat me. They drive me cra it drives me crazy when I give up. So. so, there's a lot of bubbles in here, which is okay. That's not a problem at all. And I'm going to wipe off my spatula so I can keep using this over and over again. So, let me get a piece of paper towel here. I happen to have 99% alcohol. Whoops. 99%. I get it from Amazon. I think I got it like a six pack. So I'm just going to wipe this off and get that excess residue off. Put the lid back on my alcohol. And put my stir stick away get one more sip of coffee. You can let this rest for maybe five minutes, five, ten minutes, and let the bubbles come up. What I'm going to do here, though, shake my butane torch, and I'm just going to lightly get that. Just touch it a couple times. I don't want to melt my cup. That will heat it up as well. So, oh, see, my thumb is coming out. Let me put that back in. And here we go. I have a brother scan and cut. Sorry, I'm just be concentrating here. I have a brother scan and cut. It's the original one. It's like number one. And I also ordered some vinyl so that I could play around with doing decals. I don't even know if the machine will do it. It'll cut out pictures and stuff like hearts and stars. So I don't see why it wouldn't work on other things. So I went ahead and ordered uh, a bunch of vinyls. And I thought, I'm going to do a monogram. Wouldn't that be cool? Or, you know, I heart mom. Or I heart dad. We don't want to leave the dads out, do we? But then my mind started thinking I could do. Now, of course, this would be a gift because you can't sell unless you buy the rights to it. But my son-in-law is a big Chicago Cubs fan. And right now what I'm doing is I'm just rolling over the lip. Not all the way. I'm just just running my finger right down through the top. Just to make sure. And now I'm going to do the bottom. Let me 
a little more there. And I need to get some there so I missed a spot. And I'm just doing the same thing as I did at the top. I'm running my fingers over the edge. But anyways, my son-in-law is a big Chicago Cubs fan. And I thought, wow, that would be so cool. I could do a white background. Well, of course, it would have to have some sparkle in it. <laughs> I don't know what he would think about sparkles, but I have white mica powder that is just absolutely stunning from Color Cottage. I love their mica powders. Um, and I could do the background of that with that. Just layer it with epoxy instead of painting. Or using spray adhesive with glitter. Which is what I did on this one. Actually, but I did one coat with Mod Podge just to try it out. I hated it. It stunk. I couldn't get rid of the streaks. So what I did was I took my freezer paper after it sat for a few minutes and I had the glitter on it and I just rolled it across the freezer paper because I know it won't stick to that. I let it dry. I let it dry. I'm just going to go ahead and use the rest of this because this is going to be my last coat. What was I saying? I let it dry. What did I let dry? This, I let this dry and then I used the spray adhesive and I don't, I'm not a component of uh, telling you which brands to buy. I just use this craft bond acid free because I had it. Oops, let me get it in the picture. Um, it's just laying around. I'm I don't know why I bought it. I just bought it. Probably because it was less expensive than something else at the time. So I see I've got to clean that up. Uh, take off my gloves. I think I'm done with this now. And I'm just going to let it run for another 24 hours. And I'll do the same thing with the other cup after I finish sanding it. And I'm going to use alcohol again. Just going to let the cup run and I'll just hold this paper towel here. And catch just that lip. And I'll do the same thing on this side, just on, just underneath, just to make sure I didn't catch anything. And I do see something coming up here. I want to make sure I get that. You can't put too much pressure on these motors because it'll make the thing stop spinning. This is the way to go. And you can watch this video. I just uploaded this video prior to the one I started here. And I'm going to get my stick here. I'm going to put my stick in my cup. And I'm going to scrape as much as I can to the bottom of the cup. And then I'm just going to let my, let my uh, stick sit in here. And then with this being plastic, you can, I can get a couple uses out of it because once this cures and I pull on the stick, it'll pop everything right out. It usually pulls everything out of the inside of the cup. So I'm just going to let that sit like that till tomorrow. I'm going to see the, can you see the glistening on my thumb? I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm, I'm looking at the camera at, the, at a weird angle, but the alcohol takes it right off. So anyway, that's it for this. Let that sit. And I will see you tomorrow, but you'll see me in an instant. So see you soon.
All right, we are back, guys. Since um, I, you can't really see, there are a few spots. And um, I could go back over this, sand it a little bit, and uh, do it again. Do another flood coat. However, this is mine, and it was a great practice. So... I'm just going to show you a few things that I do to clean up. Well, <laughs> what I'm going to do because I've never done it before. But um, I'm just going to take my knife and I'm going to scrape off the excess that I missed. And then I'll give it a good wipe with acetone. And then I will wash it in hot soapy water. Now the two that I did on existing mugs, these were brand new, but I had mugs that would look really ratty. And I did a nail polish dip. I put nail polish on water and then I dipped the, the cups in them. And somewhat successful. Uh, had some clumps. But I just left them because they're mine. So all I'm doing here now is I'm just cutting the excess resin off the inside of the lip. Just giving it a good clean and it's not doing anything to the, the edge. The edge here. Because we want to keep that sealed. So I'm just getting the inside. And I'm just cleaning that up. And then it's all done. But it just comes right off because it's stainless steel. You're not scratching your cup in any way. Are you seeing this? But it was it was easy. It just takes time. Um, this is like the third day they've been running. But there you have it. I'm so excited. I love this print. I also epoxied this while, um, while you guys were sleeping. <laughs> I did, uh, two coats. Isn't that gorgeous? So sparkly. I'm going to call them sparkle cups. <laughs> That's what my son called him. I sent him a picture because I was hoping that he would like one. <laughs> Sorry, Austin. He's not a sparkle guy. But I was thinking, wouldn't this be cool with um, Darth Vader's helmet? I don't know. I thought it was cool. And then my, I found out my son-in-law is a, a White Sox fan, not a Cubs fan. And uh, my daughter Tabitha thinks that that would be awesome. He he would love it, but he want he would probably want a 12 ounce cup. So I'll have to start looking for 12 ounce cups. But anyways, this is all. I, this is all I'm gonna do is just clean that base off and give it a good. Wipe down with acetone in case there's any any pieces of paint or something on the inside of the cup. And then wash it. And then I have these two beautiful cups. <sighs> I'm so excited. Possibilities are endless. Later today, I'm going to check and see if my... Um, I did some pores, acrylic pores. I'm going to see if they're dry because I did them three days ago. And then I'll probably do one as a sacrificial lamb making the template. And then I'll save the better one uh, for the video, I think. So let me, go ahead and let me know what you guys think. Write in the comments what you, what you like, what you don't like. Um, <sighs> subscribe. And have a great day.
and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye.